made it one year. Yep. We made it. <laughs> We're still alive. We didn't kill each other. Yeah. <laughs> Between the podcast and the pandemic, we still we still didn't kill each other. It's pretty surprising. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's still going. Both of them. And ironically enough, we are actually doing this while she's napping. Yeah, we finally got back to that. <laughs> so uh, cheers to you for one year. Cheers with my podcasting. cucumber water. Well, I'm drinking seltzer. <laughs> raspberry lime seltzer by yeah. Schweppes. Yeah, well, it Schweppes, is like noon, kid. so. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's noon o'clock. Yep. Noon, noon o'clock here in Rhode Island. Yeah. Um, exactly one year ago today, we released episode one, which was, was it the social media episode? I think so. Was that the first one? Um, yeah. Using social media as parents. There you go. So, uh, I mean, does it feel like a year to you? Yeah, I think in some ways it went by really fast and it doesn't feel like a year. But then I think about how much we've done and how how much we've covered um, and all the people that we've met that it kind of feels like some of them, it feels like we've known them forever. <laughs> well, let's, yeah, so, we'll get into that. Yeah. Yeah. And even just how we've changed our setup, like we've come such a long way. I remember the very first time that we recorded, we 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 had the little desk. No, even before that, we pulled out oh, the, the table, uh, pull out the uh, folding table. Yeah, we never we didn't release that episode. Right, that was like our practice that episode. Was the trial one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but still, I remember setting that whole thing up, and before we really had an actual setup. Yeah, we've Anyways. come a long way. Hey, so welcome to While She's Napping, one year anniversary episode. I am Adam. And I'm Cindy. And yeah, one year. Um, I, if you weren't pregnant, maybe we'd be drinking champagne. Yeah, that's what I was saying with my cucumber water. Yeah. It doesn't get much more exciting than that for me. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of podcasts, and this is, you know, it's it's whatever, things happen. Um, unless you're financially backed by a pretty decent sponsor or you have a sort of machine a podcasting company behind you producing your content or you're or you're joe rogan um a lot of people aren't able to do this consistently so i applaud the effort to consistently put out content um because it's not easy it's not easy Mm -hmm. to you know shift subjects every week Right. And try to come up with something to talk about. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of why um, I think our focus has just kind of naturally expanded and shifted as we've progressed. You know, we kind of started talking, even though we only had one at the time we started, we had one child who was not even two years old yet. Right. Um, but we still kind of felt like maybe we would talk mostly about our experience as parents, um, especially moving into the pandemic and like what that looked like for us out the window yeah (laughs) and our relationship and marriage and and we did a couple episodes that kind of focused on that but then there's just so much shit happening in the world that it was like this is like our one time during the week where you and i sit down and and have have a a conversation conversation uninterrupted yeah um because usually when we have a conversation and she's out of her chair she'll destroy shit yeah while we're trying to talk right or she'll just, she'll purposefully misbehave to get our attention. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Or she'll, mommy, 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 or yeah. one, whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. She'll slam on the window. Yeah. I yeah. wasn't banging the window. Yes, you were. <laughs> I was doing this. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Right, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, I feel like that's kind of, for me, that's why I was interested in sort of branching out to just talking about current events and other right. things going on because it was our only chance to really do that with each other. And it was fun to include other people in the conversation. Of course. Um, all right. So before we dive in, I just want to, you know, do a little bit of house cleaning and then we can, you know, pretty much stroke our egos for the next hour. <laughs> um, first of all, we'd like to thank everybody that has been listening to us consistently for the past year. Or if you are a new listener and you're sort of, you jumped on halfway through, or maybe this is the first time you're joining us, we welcome you. We appreciate the download. We appreciate the listen. And we appreciate the participation. Uh, moreover, the month of March has been outstanding for us. Our growth has increased by 11.9%. We'll call it 12. Um, and the amount of countries that have listened to us for the past month has been a lot. 
um, and it makes me happy. So we got obviously the U.S., Canada, Iceland, Germany, Sweden, France, Russia, Ireland, the U.K., Switzerland, Brazil, Belgium, Argentina, Australia, Finland, Mexico, Netherlands, Norway, Romania, Singapore, and Taiwan. Um, that's overwhelming for me. Yeah. Um, our voice, our content has been reaching global, globally. Mm-hmm. Um, that's overwhelming. I, in, it's not that I don't have faith in you for this to happen. Oh, I don't have faith in myself. <laughs> for this to happen so (laughs) that being said we appreciate it whether you found us via instagram or reddit we appreciate you guys giving us the opportunity to fill your day with content whether it's entertaining to you or just plain stupid from my mouth i i get it um but i I appreciate it it. yeah we appreciate it so um if you're just joining us and you want to know where to find us, we're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. We're also on YouTube. The audio is streamed there. You can you know, subscribe to us, like that content there too. Um, and if you're listening to us, wherever platform that offers a review system, whether five stars and you know, you can leave a quick comment, we appreciate the full boat. We appreciate the, the A plus rating, whatever that translates to, to your podcatcher. We'd appreciate it. Um, yeah, and if you want to get in touch with us on social media, you can. We are primarily on Instagram at While She's Napping. Uh, we're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash while she's napping and on Twitter at she's napping pod, or you can always email us at while she's napping at gmail.com. So the way I want to structure this today is we're going to pretty much, because next week we're doing something similar. Um, but this week I just want to discuss, you know, this podcast what it has meant to you maybe we can reflect on some episodes that were outside of the top 10 um Mm -hmm. aka the polls that we put up on the instagram and uh then on the second half of the show we can discuss the polls and break them down and i'm sure we're going to be able to talk a lot about those specific episodes um in the process but just for the sake of transparency from March of 2020 all the way to today, the top 10 episodes that we'll be discussing sort of not in detail, but in a little bit of detail, I guess, on the second half of the show, the number one downloaded most listened to episode was climate change. That's surprising to me. Not that it's not an important topic, but of all the topics, <laughs> I I didn't expect climate change. To yeah. And that one. was one of our earliest episodes. Yeah. So shout out to everybody that, you know, believes in climate change and (laughs) wants to do something about it because we pretty much broke down the science versus disbelief. That was the subtitle. Um, The fat acceptance community was number two. Doesn't surprise me. Cancel culture part one was number three. The Mandela effect was number four. There was a lot of criticisms, constructive criticisms about that episode saying, you know, (laughs) Those in support of the Mandela effect sort of, I don't want to say came at us. Well, they just pointed out that there were better examples out there. Whatever. Yeah. The 90s episode uh, was number five. Um, Toxic masculinity, number six. The Rhode Island centered episode was number seven. Here's to all the dads. That's the Father's Day episode was number eight. The MLM episode was number nine. And so you want to have a kid was number 10. Those are our top 10 episodes. So sort of getting away from that. Um, and we'll save all those to the second half. Is there anything, any specific episode that stands out to you that you were like, I really fucking love that episode or any specific episode that stands out to you that says, this is where we hit our groove. Where? Let's start right there. When do you think we really became while she's napping? That's a really hard question. I wanted to preface this whole conversation with... You don't remember it. (laughs) So so it's a running inside joke in our family and circle of friends. I have a terrible memory. Yeah. So a lot of... um, And I think it's become worse since I've had a kid. Like (laughs) the lack of sleep. And then of course with the pandemic on top of it and all the stress. Like I am so bad at remembering things. And this whole year feels like a... Like it's all blurred together. Sure. <laughs> so I wanted to preface that with I'm probably going to be really bad at thinking of things off the top of my head. But when you say something that rings a bell, 
then I will be able to dive in. <laughs> okay. I think So you start. Sure. I think where we hit our groove and first pivoted towards we should break away from marriage talk and kids talk because if you look in the beginning, right, we have the social media, how we handle that as parents with our child in terms of not putting pictures of her up on social media or even mentioning her name mm -hmm. on this show. Um, we talk. The second episode was the importance of fitness as family. We want right. to be that sort of role model, and you know, develop and um, really ingratiate healthy behaviors with our child. Um, pregnancy to birth was the third episode. So again, it's sort of marriage slash parenting related. Mm -hmm. Climate change. I think we co coincided that with you know how it's important to have a future for our children. Right. Um, and how we want to raise our kids to appreciate the yeah. natural world and stuff like that. And I think, did you skip gender roles? That uh, was our second episode. Was it? Then, yeah, yeah, I probably Which skipped Which also it. related to how we, because we, we brainstormed like how we think we might be raising our child differently if she was a boy. Okay. Um. So again, very connected to parenting. Yep. And uh, things we tell our past selves, we sort of link that to parenting and how we, we'd want to communicate things to our child um i think pandemic is when we first pivoted and <laughs> hit that groove yeah uh, we're not fucking around i and was yeah so i was thinking this that's the one that jumped out at me is like especially since it was it was different because it was um not a planned episode we did it as a bonus like yes. middle of the week emergency like we have to just discuss yeah, this yeah we have to like word vomit all of the things that <laughs> we're thinking about because yeah. this is infuriating what is happening and i feel like another thing that sort of um started there and has continued in to be an underlying theme or uh, something of interest throughout a lot of our episodes has been the concept of misinformation and yeah. disinformation especially with social media you know it was connected obviously to the whole everything to do with covid and now the vaccines that are coming out and during the election and we talked about QAnon. so i really i agree that that episode was sort of our initial pivot to topics that weren't connected to parenting really in any way yeah and you know we didn't use names it it impacted us because we saw a lot of our friends and family sort of sharing this on Facebook and I just remember saying you know why does everything have to end with an ellipsis why is everything <laughs> that needs to be impactful to, makes you think sometimes dot 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 like mm -hmm. what it, that's the one thing that stood out <laughs> to me for that but that episode in particular made me realize okay we're we're not just a parent because I think there's something a little condescending about hey we again we don't know what we're doing when it comes to parenting and stuff I, i'll be the first to admit it but to have the balls to put up a podcast and be like we don't know what we're doing but we're going to tell you what we're doing you know? well i think it depends on how it's presented i feel like i was trying to present it as hopefully you can relate to this yes and i think we were thinking of it as conversation starters yeah like or or even an opportunity just like we said since we don't get to talk one-on-one -on -one un uninterrupted very often it was an opportunity for us to actually talk these things through and yeah. see where we each stood on these different facets of parenting but i don't think we ever presented it as we are family like therapists or, or parenting experts yeah, or yeah. child behavior specialists or anything like that like we were like we have no idea what the hell we're doing we are first time parents of a very young child and we have many challenges ahead of us yeah <laughs> so i think it was more of just like a this is probably pretty relatable because yes. like most parents we are completely flying by the seat of our pants here yeah yeah and you know going back to the the pandemic episode you mentioned that was an impromptu Mm -hmm. episode that was a midweek thing that's what sort of threw off the this is episode 51 52 we've that's been right. doing this for 52 weeks but there i think this will be the 53rd episode um or maybe not i don't know but um we I had right. planned yeah. that week for a mother's day episode right so that's you discussing you as a mom mm -hmm. we were going to do that that weekend but because of pandemic we had an impromptu episode in the middle of the week. And after that planned episode of Mother's Day, that's when you see the shift 
mm-hmm. from not talking about because then it's Rhode Island, MLMs, baby boomers versus millennials, yep. 90s, atheists. Like, we didn't it, get back to parenting until like five episodes later. Parenting as atheists. Right. Yeah. But that was a much deeper conversation just right. about religious beliefs and all of that. But at least it linked back to parenting like we did at the beginning. Yeah. You know? So we have this sort of paradigm shift yeah. where we, I think that's the point where we're, when we realize, okay, we're onto something and, you know, you can, I can be somewhat entertaining when it comes to uh, content and, you know, trying to compel people to listen. It, it's, it's difficult. So I think we did a good job doing that. Um, that being said, what is for you one of the things that you've learned during this process or what is the one of the benefits that you've had during this process and we've talked about having an hour to have a conversation with each other um outside of that yeah i mean obviously i think (laughs) we probably communicate better when we're recording yeah (laughs) because nobody wants to look like an asshole in front of other people i thought Anytime we get into an argument, I wish we were recording. Stick a microphone in front of me. <laughs> yeah. Even if we're not recording, right. it will probably go better. Probably. Because we make an active effort not to talk over each other and things like that, not in- to interrupt, which is actually a really big problem for both of us <laughs> when we're fighting off mic. Um, and so I think it's been a good opportunity for us to, you know, have. I don't want to say civil. It's not like we're not civil to each other normally, but you know what I mean. Like uh, we're able to have conversations that don't devolve into arguments completely. And it's more of a debate and a healthy discussion, I think. Especially Um, when there's input from other people to sort of drive the conversation. Right. And I think um, we've, there've both been instances where each of us have been validated in our opinion when there's things that we uh, disagree on. And I think that helps us realize the other person's opinion isn't totally ridiculous and right. is valid and there are other people who share that and i think it's helped us um sort of respect each other's you know perspectives a little bit more um and i think for me on a personal level i think it's given me um a lot more confidence just to say what i think um and that a lot of times and i've experienced this in other circumstances too um you know like in in the professional world or whatever like if you're thinking something kind of pervasively, if there's something that's nagging in the back of my mind, um, I'm usually not the one to say anything or to, to ask the question or to speak up about it because I'm afraid it's going to be stupid. Right. Um, and I've this project has taught me that if I just say it, there's a good chance that a lot of people are thinking the same thing or yeah. something similar. I mean, there's always going to be people who disagree, but I'm just saying like a lot of the things that I'm thinking of are are very relatable and it's sometimes it's good to just be the one to say it yeah, and it sparks the conversation that is so along those lines that is something that i have learned not just with this podcast but you know mostly with this podcast compared to the previous podcasts that i've done because the previous podcasts have that i've done are all sports related Mm -hmm. right so it's very hard to say something sociologically controversial right in a sports thing unless it has to do with uh, a, maybe a player taking a knee or something, even though I completely agree with their right to free speech and I don't disagree with the, the practice at all. But you can picture a sports commentator ripping a player for that and there being backlash. Right. Deservedly show. So um, for me with this, this is a lot more broad when it comes to the topic. So you're going to piss someone off. Right. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And there's no better example than that than the Fat Acceptance Community episode. And before we even started this project, I told you, I said, there's a good chance you're going to say something completely accidentally that you think is 100% innocuous and you think it's data driven, science driven, factual. How can anybody be upset about this? And I said, there will be people that are going to be upset and you just have to swallow it. Mm-hmm. And there's no better example than that. I know we're going to talk about that episode in a little bit more detail in the second half of the show, but there's no better example than that than the fat acceptance community because, you know, I listened to that back and a, some of it makes me cringe. I said, oh, I shouldn't have said that. But then I said, <laughs> but I mean it, but I believe it. Right? Yeah. I, I believe in these things. I believe in these uh, points that I'm making. So 
if people are not going to like me and what I'm saying for something that I legitimately believe in, and it's sort of, actually it is data driven and science driven, to me that's no different than someone hating me or shitting on me for encouraging that person to wear a mask. Right. Or because you're pro-vax or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. It, it's I can no see that. different. I think, yeah, I do remember that in the beginning too. I was um, very careful with my words and like, um, I mean, we even talked about it on the episodes we did on cancel culture about, yeah, you know, consequences of saying the wrong thing and how to go about handling that. And neither of us have ever done anything where we've been really in the public. No. Like, we you know what I mean? Are. We've never, well, that's what I mean. But there are other people i mean people from all over the world listening to yes, our show yeah. but i'm saying like majority of people if they don't like what we say they just stop listening right right um so but i still think it's it's been good practice to sort of balance yes we should say what we think i mean that's kind of the point of of this like it's our platform it's yes. our show and it's our content and we should be expressing ourselves um and being vulnerable vulnerable enough to do that um and at the same time, you know, trying to be not to be blatantly insulting, right? To people. be respectful, try yeah. to do our due diligence with trying to educate ourselves on the topic enough to be able to talk about it in a respectful and, you know, a way that at least is meaningful. Yeah, um, don't get me wrong. You know. I'm, I wasn't making fun of people or calling people names right. in no, any I know. of these episodes. Yeah. If anything, maybe in the pandemic episode, I did because I was just so pissed off. We were upset. Or, um, <laughs> the the sports and Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. movement that we episode that we did you know I, yeah. I remember discussing you know people get upset with players taking a knee but when it comes to listening to the national anthem at their house when the Super Bowl's on they're sitting on their fat ass eating chicken wings <laughs> and to me that's just that's me saying you're being a hypocrite you're being a hypocrite with these things because there is a stereotypical vision of a person that you get when you think of that type well, of person. Well, that's what it is. I mean, you are implementing a stereotype and broad brushing yes. people, but you're acknowledging that that's what you're not, it's not literal what you're saying. Oh, listen, f full disclosure, I'm sitting on my fat ass eating chicken wings. <laughs> you're not wings standing up either. And yeah. not standing. Yeah. No, no, I'm not. And I don't, you can call me un American. I don't know. <laughs> but my point is, is you have to be fearless. And what you say and when there's pushback in something from what I have learned from doing this from dealing with people in the sports world and stuff that yeah you know some of the things you say are going to upset people but don't worry in two weeks it's going to go away well yes I mean I think to the to the criticisms that aren't um constructive or valuable or help you learn something like I feel like if we say something or or characterize something in a way that's inaccurate and someone reaches out and says hey that's not really what this is or you kind of misinterpreted this thing that you talked about and it's a learning opportunity We're for open us to that. completely and I feel like that's most of what the responses have been we have received constructive criticisms and we always say we are not experts on any of the topics that we're yeah. going to talk about. And if you're as a listener you know something that we don't or you happen to be an expert in this field or on this topic we really want to hear from you. Like, I feel like we've been very transparent about that hmm. and we welcome those opportunities to learn. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, a lot of the responses that we get, um, I'll call back to the incel episode, which has been a pretty heavily listened to episode for the month of March. I think we recorded that in February. I think so. A lot of people have been listening to that. Um, I say to myself, because we got a response on YouTube about someone saying, you know, you, the the incel movement is this. We're not all this. We're not all white. And I said to myself, we never said you're all white. We never said there weren't people of color in this community. We never said they don't exist. You know, so clearly to me, and I, we've acknowledged this on another episode, to me it's saying, you didn't listen to the episode. Maybe you listened to five minutes and when you heard something that upset you, you turn it off and responded. You know, you didn't listen to the full content. And for me, I'm not going to give you a response then. Whereas if you listen to the whole episode and you say, look, you were wrong about this, this, this. And some of those things that we were wrong about were later in the episode. I say, okay, clearly you've listened and mm -hmm. this is constructive. We want to learn. Thank you. Right. But 
if you accuse us, and this happened with the Fat Acceptance episode too, if you accuse us of saying something that we blatantly did not say, and or we clearly audio, said the opposite. Yes, there's <laughs> audio to prove it. Yeah. I don't care to respond to you. Right. I just don't. And again, it goes away in two weeks. Yeah. Well, and that's been a big lesson for me because I'm I'm notoriously a huge people pleaser. I'm very sensitive. I'm very much an empath and I hate making people feel bad. I hate feeling like people are mad at me or like have misinterpreted something that I said. It's just, um, it's, I think it's harder for me. I think you've had more practice in that and letting, and we talked, we had a whole episode on, on letting, on letting go, go yeah. about how I'm terrible at letting things go <laughs> and you're, yeah. you do it a lot more easily than I do. Um, so yeah, that's been something that I've had to work on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Moving away from that, though, I, I think it's important, though, to acknowledge that this show has given me more of a backbone, I think, for you the same. Um, because what I remind you of is saying, you know, like if someone was an anti-masker, you would say, you're being ridiculous, I don't care. And you'd brush it off. Uh, well, yes, but um, I I think we talked a little bit about this actually on the climate change episode about communications and you know what si- I mean. like, like well yeah in if I'm probably just rolling my eyes accepting of the if, facts well, yes and if they were just being an asshole yes, and they weren't yes. willing to have a conversation but I'm saying if I if it was someone especially someone that I cared about and they were strongly anti-vax or anti-mask yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever and we actually were able to sit down and have a conversation and I've had conversations like this with loved ones about climate change in particular but pre-pandemic um and they're coming at it with, well, this is my understanding of, of this and this is why I don't believe this. And mm-hmm. and it's an actual legitimate conversation. I'm completely open to having the conversation. I'm not automatically going to blow you off because I think your belief is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I might be eye rolling in my head a little bit because it's just frustrating because it, sometimes it seems like you're it's it's hard to get through um, and surpass some of the misinformation once it's like so ingrained in someone's head. Um but that's a huge challenge that we, I think, we just face with so many things right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, another benefit for this, um, meeting the people that we've met and interacting with the people that we've met. And this goes for the negative ones, too. Um, we've already discussed the benefits of the negatives, but the positives far, far outweigh all of that. Um, specifically, the babes, um, very, very... In, I wouldn't say impromptu, but very like immediate click. Yes. Um, interacting with them and socializing with them. Um, other people I've met through the show via Reddit being very receptive to the content and very positive in their feedback, sometimes even constructively so. Mm-hmm. Um, very, very grateful for that. I am not the type of person that likes to, um, you know, take deep dives into Reddit and um content i'm very busy so i try to listen to as many episodes that people post on r slash podcast and podcasting and stuff as much as possible because you know it's community i don't like to be that guy that just dumps an episode and not return the favor for someone um so in that aspect that community has been very uplifting and if it wasn't for that sort of reddit community we would have never known about MySpace with you and right. Didn't they found us on Reddit? Reddit, mm-hmm. yeah. And I think they gave us their uh, Instagram link, and mm-hmm. we listened to their first episode. And pretty much every every episode they published. And I know things are difficult for them in terms of time, yeah, uh, right now. Uh, but you know whether they're podcasting or not makes no difference. Well, it makes a difference to me. <laughs> I, I prefer it, but right. <laughs> it's not my life. But I'm glad we were able to make that connection. Yeah, that I I feel like um, so they're the ones that really stick out as like new friends that we've made, people we really clicked with and connected with, and have added a lot of value to our show mm. as well. You know, being our our only guests, I think that we've had, and oh, yeah. our um, you know, hopefully pretty regular guests. Um, if we can make our schedules work, the time difference makes it challenging. But um, yeah, and in addition to that, I feel like there are other people that I you know, acquaintances or whatever people from that maybe I'm still friends with on social media or something, but I haven't really talked to in forever who got just tighter. happen to see yeah. us post or share an episode and they're like, oh, let's see what this person has to say. 
And we ended up connecting over, you know, a variety of different topics that we've talked about with, you know, several different people. And it's just been, especially in the age of COVID and during the pandemic, when we haven't been doing a lot of socialization, it's been really great to reconnect with some of those people and realize how much we have in common and kind of have conversations that normally you would have, like if you ran into somebody that you knew at a party or you, you know, had a fire with some friends, you know, and just like you were just shooting the shit about whatever was going on in the world. Um, Those things haven't been happening naturally Mm. this year. So um, it was sort of a platform for that to happen, which I really appreciated that connection. Yeah. It's weird to me when we see our friends like via zoom or something or FaceTime and they're like, Oh, we listened to your episode. I, I appreciate it with all my heart. I appreciate it. But I'm the type of person that's just like, just, Mm -mm, don't talk to me about it because like I just it makes me feel weird oh I don't feel that way at all Oh, I feel so (laughs) strange talking about it like that's the point is to kickstart the conversation no I know but I just feel so strange like uh, I probably pissed you off (laughs) well I feel like it's maybe but I also feel like it's it's kind of weird because you're starting the conversation at an imbalance because They've only heard your side yeah. and you haven't heard them respond to like anything in real time while the conversation was happening. It's like they're responding all at once to an hour long conversation, which is not how conversations work. So yeah. I feel like it's like you have to give them the time to just like Let me say listen everything. to you for an hour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you just respond for an hour. You know? Um. So I feel like that. And, and I also find it hard to not repeat myself. Like I'm trying to remember yeah. what I said in the episode and what I actually said while I was talking to the person. Um. So yeah, it's just it's just the nature of the fact that they already listened to us ramble for an hour. Yeah, maybe <laughs> I shouldn't be so concerned with it because they're still talking to me in a way, and if I really pissed them off, they wouldn't bother. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I'm doing all right. <laughs> um, all right, we're a half hour into this. This was a good sort of Kickstarter and recollection of the show in general. I just want to say before we break down the top ten episodes, um, I really appreciate everybody's interaction. Everybody's participation and listenership i know i say that at the top of every show but i'm the type of guy with the lowest of low self-esteems and when i see that people from all over the globe are listening to not just the voice of my wife you cindy but my voice too it means a lot to me um you know especially those that take an hour out of their day and i know podcasting is sort of a uh, passive experience you know, you're either working or doing laundry or doing housework, whatever. Um, just the fact that you hit play and gave us a chance to fill you with some sort of entertainment or, you know, just out of boredom, whatever. I really appreciate it. And, you know, we're not in a top 10. We're not highly ranked on the iTunes chart or whatever. But look, if we're averaging like 200 listens a week, to me, I'm thinking, that's 200 people that if we were doing this live, we're doing that in front of every week. Mm-hmm. And imagine sitting down and talking in front of 200 people every week. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. It depends. But to me, it's just, that's amazing. I love it. Yeah, especially when there's so much content out there. There's so many, yeah. like I can't even keep up with the podcast that I'm subscribed to. I always have a huge backlog of oh, yeah. episodes. Yeah. Um So, yeah, I completely agree. I think um, and the fact that we have such a good, you know, group of consistent listeners Mm -hmm. who come back every week and no matter what I'm talking about, whatever, no matter what we are talking about, they, um, you know, are interested in coming back for more. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it started. I had this idea of podcasting with you way before I brought it up to you. I want to say in January, February of 2020, when things were, quote unquote, normal Mm -hmm. and I still remember when you texted me the, um, I don't know, you were probably downstairs and I was upstairs. No, and you I was texted at work. Oh, you were. That's yeah. right. Before you were working from home. Um, yeah. And you were like, so I think we should start a podcast. And I was like, oh, oh you said, well, we can call it while she's napping. And I to- I just like fell right into your trap. I don't remember exactly the order of how it went, but I said, and when are we supposed to do this? And you were like, <laughs> dot, 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 well, she's while napping. she's napping. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, I asked for that. <laughs> That's usually how it goes, you know. And yep. what what kickstarted it for me is was the pandemic, 
starting us like it, there's no fucking better time right if, we, if we're ever gonna do it now's the time yeah and, yeah you know i was well versed in how to start a podcast at that point right which will be next week's episode but yeah. let's take a break here we're gonna break down the top 10 uh hang tight we'll be right back Before we do that, at the, I knew we were due for a break, but I wanted to mention that um, you mentioned how you were so well versed in podcasting and everything. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. No, okay, <laughs> you were though, but you knew what you were doing from the tech, like the technical side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were very comfortable with talking on a microphone and interacting. Like most of your other podcast episodes, were talking with a guest or talking yes. with another person. Yeah. And um. Anyway, I just wanted to say that I appreciate your confidence in me to do this because it was not something that I was comfortable with in the beginning, something I had zero experience doing. Well, everybody that listened to our first episode said, you have a fantastic podcasting voice. Yeah, I know. I was And I'm saying to myself, (laughs) I've been doing this shit for years and no one's ever said that. (laughs) So you're saying mine sucks. (laughs) So anyway, we can get into the top 10, but I just wanted to say that because if it wasn't for you, you kind of really had to push me to, mm. to take the dive and, it's and do it. It's not easy. And it, I'm glad There's something did. very uh, intimidating about a microphone being in front of your face. Right. Um, like I said, I've been in bands since I was 13, singing right. in bands. So I'm used to, you know, having people in front of me being totally. in your most vulnerable position. And I think talking is much less vulnerable than singing. I agree. <laughs> um, so having a microphone in front of you, for me, just I've been growing up with mm-hmm. it. So I mean, outside of drunken karaoke, right? I haven't done that. <laughs> yeah, It does take a, a lot. And this will be covered in next week's episode. But it does take a lot of vulnerability to put yourself out there for a podcast. But let's... I don't want to digress any further. Yeah. No offense, but I do appreciate it. Um, <laughs> so our top 10 episodes, we did this March Madness style. Yeah. Right. We, uh, I ranked the top 10 in the beginning of this episode. So what we did was 10 versus, uh, sorry, one versus 10, two versus nine, et cetera, et cetera. All the way down to now we have the final two. Right. The voting is not finished. Um, so maybe by the time this episode is released, we'll have a better grasp on it. But I will say the last two episodes that have remained, I told you when we put up this mm-hmm. poll, it's going to be these two episodes going yep. up against each other. They are my favorite episodes that we've yeah, ever done. Yeah, I wasn't totally surprised either. <laughs> but let's start with climate change. So this is, or, or do you want to go backwards? Do you want to go to 10 to 1 or 1 to 10? Yeah, 10 to, well, because that was the, oh, you want to do them in order, not by oh, we polls. we can do the, the poll. That's we can fine. do the matchups. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Yeah, so the first round we did... Um, it, so we did 10 to 1 was uh, climate change versus so you want to have a kid. So you want to have so a kid. So just yeah. generally about having kids. Um, I, so, I thought it was yeah, f- funny because the because uh, climate change was actually our first episode, our number one episode. And it's having kids was our number episode, 10. Yes. But having kids won the poll and advanced so, to the next round. I think there's a difference we need to establish here. Most downloaded doesn't mean best, right? I True. think the, the topic yeah. is a grabber mm-hmm. for people. I think... Climate change, you know, even through the pandemic, it's some one of those hot button issues that everybody wants to talk about. Shout out to Greta. Um, <laughs> and many know. others. Yeah. So people listen to it. That doesn't necessarily mean they enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, they might have enjoyed other episodes better. Um, well, and, and people who were caught by the title of the science versus disbelief, it might be people who don't believe in climate change who listened right. and hated us. You don't us. know where <laughs> we And never stood. listened again. <laughs> yeah. Popping on that episode. Yeah. You didn't know beforehand. Um But shout out to my friend that I've met through the other podcast suggesting that we have an episode about, you know, having children, the decision to do it. Um, I enjoy that episode. I'm not surprised at one. You know, even though it's the 10th versus the one, the underdog won this. Right. I think it was a very relatable episode. Right. So I'm not surprised. Yeah. But... And I think we should revisit that topic. Like maybe we could look for when we actually did that one and 
maybe a year after or around a year. We like, did that July 20th, 2020. Okay. So this summer before our second child arrives, yeah. that might be a good time to revisit that episode yeah. um, about what has changed in that year, what we've learned yeah. um, and what to expect with number two on the way. All right. So having a kid won. Then it was fat acceptance versus MLMs. Yeah. And MLMs won I'm 100%. I'm not surprised. I'm either. not surprised. Look, again, you... <sighs> Even though we got pushback on the fat acceptance community, we did get a lot of people that said, we agree with you. Yeah. And what's funny to me is the people that said it did it privately. Right. And I think, I'm not trying to stir the pot. I just think that speaks to the movement that, you know, it's as soon as you push back against it, you are the enemy. And... For me, it's that episode really established my, I don't know, where I drew the line when it comes to there are some things that I understand, like making fun of people where, you know, when it comes to their appearance, and I even said it in the episode, is terrible. You shouldn't do it. It's gross. Um, I don't care what your weight is. I don't care what your body shape is. You should never be ridiculed or made fun of or discriminated against based on that alone, based off aesthetics. I think that's terrible. And I agree. But I will stay, I will, you know, stand my ground and say, you cannot be healthy and morbidly obese. And I don't think that's a hot take. Apparently it is. But by definition, scientifically, if you are morbidly obese, morbidly, that's there's a reason the term morbid is yeah. in there. You are not healthy. You just aren't. And that is, for me, the the slippery slope of the healthy at every size movement, because I'm saying it, it, it coincides the word every. So if you are 600 pounds and bedridden, are you healthy? Yeah. I mean, we talked about how we it's felt like size. there was some misnomers like we we felt like we understood the intent or the you know what it was meant to mean yeah but how it was hard to connect all the dots yeah we but, don't have to revisit it no and i feel like one thing that maybe is it's just it is it's really hard it's a sensitive subject and i think we we kind of failed to preface it with the reason why i mean you approach that topic from a very um like it's from your background in ethics and ethical theory and uh, your personal experience. Yeah. So I feel like those are two things that aren't necessarily always included in this conversation. Right. And it's those are fully the things that drive you and your opinion about yeah. it. Yeah. And I don't I feel like we could have done a better job sort of like setting the stage for that. Um, but I don't disagree with what yeah, you're yeah, saying. Yeah. Like you may think this is funny or whatever, but you know, I'm super into comics, specifically Batman, and everybody knows the story of Batman, right? His parents are killed in front of him, and he uses that as a motivator to fight crime so other people don't have to experience what he did. There is a, a sort of a metaphor in there. So, like, my father passed away because of terrible eating habits, so I'm thinking, okay, that took my dad away. Mm -hmm. So I'm my Batman is to combat that forever and to eliminate any pushback or any movement, you know, or whether it's vocally, I'm, I'm not going to go protest the movement or anything, but my platform is this podcast. And I say, look, you can't be, show me someone that's 500 pounds and 75 years old. Find them, find I them know. for me. I you know. can't find them. And it's because they've unfortunately passed away. And I'm not saying, it's obesity, period. I'm saying, obviously, other things contributed to that. But obesity is definitely a heavy, no pun mm -hmm. intended, driver into that. Yeah. So for me, it's just, yeah, that's, it's very personally impactful for me. And I will verbally spar with anybody yeah, to the no, death. I think, I think it's all valid. And I know we, we need to move on. But yeah. um, we, could, we could revisit some of the nuances within that conversation. I feel like it could be their own episode, like talking about... Um, you know, uh, injustices in terms of like, we mentioned it, I think on the climate, um, I don't remember which episode, about food deserts and inequality when it comes mm -hmm. to access to healthy food and yeah, yeah. historical issues with mistrust with the medical community. 
sure, um, sure. in certain it, for mostly for people of color. And there's a lot of validity behind those things. And I don't think those are things that we naturally think about because we are white middle yeah, upper class yeah, people yeah. like we never had to think about it um but i think those are some of the things that are underlying um that when they're not taken into consideration i think can spark a, in a very emotional backlash um so anyway yeah, yeah. i learned I, a lot i, I want to move that, on but, sorry yeah. yeah mlms um i love that episode because it discusses what we've learned in our experience or mostly you yeah i was grateful for the opportunity to finally talk about that because i feel like i was just like living in shame that i had ever done that and a lot of people still are as a result of the pandemic are still getting grabbed i know by these mlms i know it's sad it is um but i feel like that was probably for some people that might have been kind of eye-opening to hear some of the (laughs) experience and um like what those businesses can do to people. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So MLM's one. Yeah. Um, cancel culture. Cancel culture part one. Part one. Which we just did part two a few weeks ago. So uh, cancel culture versus the Father's Day episode. Um, those were tied 50-50. Okay. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll go back to that. Those, I yeah, we moved them on both into the next sure. round. Um, Next we had... Well, do you want to discuss that at all? Oh, sure. Yeah, sorry. No, if we're going to put them against another poll, that's fine. So Mandela Effect versus Rhode Island. Yes. Uh, No brainer. Yeah, Rhode Island definitely won. I think the Mandela Effect episode was fun. I think it's something that we've always kind of joked about and talked about. It's definitely a fun episode to listen to. It is. And I would be interested, like, I wish that the people who reached out and said we didn't do enough research, there are better examples, told us what those examples were so we could maybe do a part two and talk more about it. Um, Listen, I am nothing except surface level. Okay. So. On, yeah, on the mint, and we, yes. and I think we were very transparent about that yes. too. Like we were just talking about the ones that are the most popular examples. Yes. In pop culture that people yes. talk about, we're just having fun. Um, Relax. and I think it would have been interesting to. I, I I forgot to mention it when we did the episode on the Are we in a simulation? Mm. And it made me wonder about like. Is the Mandela effect part of the simulation? Well, like, was it a Could glitch be. in the simulation, and that's why no, the Mandela effect happens? No, someone planting it in there. Yeah, just and fucking c- with us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so that would have been kind of funny to link those two together. But Rhode Island won. Rhode Island we'll, won. We'll discuss yep. that in detail. So. Um, next was the, uh, another no-brainer. Yeah, blowout. The '90s versus toxic masculinity in the love '90s. Love that. By 100%. I love both of them. Yeah, but '90s is. Well, it was just so fun. And again, yeah. it's so relatable to people in our generation yeah. and our peers. Um, I am proud of the toxic masculinity episode. I think that's one of the ones. It's a very, I don't want to say underrated because it's in the top 10. Obviously, people enjoyed it. Um, but the, the back and forth mm-hmm. that we had, I that thought w- was yeah. very good. That was one of the episodes or topics I think that we disagree on. Oh, it the is. The most. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, and so that was a good exercise and, and, and what you heard on the episode was not the end of the conversation no. by any means. It's still going on. It's still going on. And it did include other people. Some friends and family had reached out and we were having like group text yeah, <laughs> discussions yeah. about it. So it's a really involved topic. It's probably one that maybe we could revisit, especially. Yeah, an hour is not good enough. No. And there was actually a comment, I think maybe on YouTube, one of our listeners had said. You should do you a were, You were just getting into the meat of it. Yeah. When you had to wrap up like yeah. so that might be an interesting one to revisit sometime. It's not that toxic masculinity is a bad episode. It's just the 90s is fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, because the 90s were great. Yeah. Period. All right. So that was the round one uh, episode. So round two, having kids versus cancel culture. So we already talked about the kids episode. The cancel culture, I feel like when we did that first part one episode, we were focused on the J.K. Rowling letter yes, yes that was kind of what prompted and it and the noam chomsky yes the, everyone oh, that had signed yeah, on to it right yeah so it was i feel like that was um like that was the current event that prompted us to talk about it when we did but we talked about it more generally as a concept yeah um and some of the initial reactions of some of the social media platforms and everything but i feel like that has come a long way there have been a lot of examples of cancel mm. culture um and there's more discussion about cancel culture versus accountability culture and what that looks like so that's why we did the part two last time focusing on on a, a few specific instances yeah I but wonder that's if not we, going anywhere no i wonder if this the 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 current debate about cancel culture and whatnot if that wasn't in the forefront now 
if this would even be in the top 10. Because I have a feeling, like, yeah. this is how I do podcasts. If I want to research a topic, I'll just type it in the search. I don't right. care wh- when it was produced. Right. I'll just listen to the episode. Mm-hmm. And I have a feeling a lot of people do that as well. Yeah. So if now that cancel culture is in the front of people, well, it's not in the front. It's not the, on the forefront of people's political debates, but it is there. Mm-hmm. If people are interested in listening to an episode about it via podcast, they might do the same thing. And because this was so heavily downloaded, this might be one of the first ones that you see. I don't know. I should actually check that out. But well, it, people might also find it through um, the hashtags on social media mm-hmm. um, in this in a similar sense. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm sure that that's one, one that will uh, revisit. So having kids ended up winning. Wow. Um, OK. Yeah. I don't again, I guess it's just because it's so relatable and yeah. maybe it's because. I mean, cancel culture is an interesting topic, but I feel like it's also something you could kind of get exhausted by because when something happens, it's like everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, you're seeing it all over your social media and a lot of podcasts are talking about it. Um, and having kids is just, there's, I feel like that's a topic that can never get old because there's always a hilarious story or something new that happens or yeah. parents have a different experience. Um, so yeah, so having kids won. Um, the next matchup was MLMs versus the 90s. There's no contest. No contest. The 90s won. Yeah. It wasn't as close as I thought it would be, though. It was 70-30. We're going to talk about it. Just hang tight. Um, and then Father's Day versus Rhode Island. No contest. Look, no, I appreciate yeah. people because that was a very me-centric episode, the right. Father's Day one. Um, I think I even cried in that episode, <laughs> um, if you want to listen to me cry, um, <laughs> or at least get really close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I that episode meant a lot to me because that I think that was the first time you took the ball. I was like interviewing you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And also for the record, the other time you cried was in the pregnancy to birth episode right before you said probably one of the best lines of the entire podcast series. You were reflecting on the birth of our daughter and you were talking about when she was born and I picked her up. Oh, smells like pussy. Yeah. And you got it all teary eyed (laughs) telling the story. And then you said she smelled like pussy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. many people I know were just like crying laughing when they heard you said, tell that story. It was like the delivery of the story was, and no pun intended, it was about the delivery yeah. of our child. But yeah, um, that was the first time you cried on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but I appreciate, even though this was against Rhode Island. Yeah. No contest. Yeah. Um, even though I appreciate people listening to that episode it meant a lot to me on a personal level the father's day one here's to all the dads but rhode island it's come on yeah near and dear to our hearts yeah and a lot of our listeners are from rhode island yeah so i might circle back and listen to the father's day episode when father's day comes or maybe mm-hmm. we'll talk about maybe a part two I, I we're doing a lot of part twos um i don't want to just go through our entire Entire catalog well, I think so. That was two. actually going to be part of the uh, next polls that we put up. I was going to do the last matchup, so yeah. the championship round for the favorite episode of all time, and then we were going to do uh, an open uh, question for people to submit topic ideas for the next sure. coming yeah. year, and it could include revisiting some, like we talked about how toxic masculinity. Yeah, we, I don't like, mind revisiting some. I just don't yeah. want to go through the catalog. Oh no, of course not. Yeah. But the ones that. F- feel like there was more to say yeah, or there's been yeah. um things that have happened since we've recorded that would add to the conversation i sure. think we can revisit yeah. those um yes yeah, so rhode island automatically got the buy because it got the most votes it got the most votes yeah um so rhode island is automatically in the championship round the semifinal round was having kids versus the 90s and the 90s won yeah it i told you landslide. when we started this poll i said it's gonna be rhode island versus the 90s yeah a hundred percent those were so fun and we did a lot of fun polls with those i think those were probably this was back when facebook was cooperating and we yeah. did the polls on facebook but um i think those were the two episodes that we did the most polls like i was doing them every day multiple times yeah. a day like yes. we had so many things for people to vote on and talk about and it was just really fun um which one do you packed. want to talk about first well, so, first of all what's gonna win we haven't put it up yet as of this recording I, Sunday I don't afternoon. Wanna, I don't want to bias it if people haven't voted yet. All I don't right. want to say which one I think will win. Okay. Which one was your favorite? Because that doesn't necessarily mean that's the one that's going to win. Um, I love the Rhode Island episode. I fucking love so that episode. So I was going to say I liked it too. But oh, so one thing I wanted to say is that I feel like both these two episodes I were also my favorite titles. Oh, yeah. Well, I think 
All right, so I came up with the title, the one where we talk about the 90s, because you love Friends. Right. And I think that, you know, sort of coincides with the 90s, people will get it. You came up with the title for Rhode Island. It's full of weenus. Yeah, because people are like, full of what? What the fuck? <laughs> and, and it was a play on, because we talked about the rustic drive-in and yeah. how it's shaped like a penis. And then and we weenus. talked about, yeah. And like, that's, Rhode Island doesn't pronounce their R's, Rhode Islanders. Right. Um, so those were my two favorite episode titles, too. Along with oh, yeah. apparently a favorite episodes. Anytime Rhode Island is trending on Twitter, I always put out a tweet. Yeah, and Rhode Island saying, probs, Rhode Island problems. Yeah, they yeah. sometimes retweet the things that we put up. Yeah, and vice I said versa. you need to listen to this episode yeah. now that Rhode Island is trending. Right. Um. So um, which one do you? Which one did you like the most? So I will say for a very specific reason, the '90s, because I got to finally prove you wrong on the Limp Bizkit Britney Spears I debate. Don't think that's true at all <laughs> it's in the numbers okay Whatever. it's data driven it's in I have the, evidence it's in the uh <laughs> the podcast reviews too on yes it uh, is apple yep um i love that rhode island episode i just again i've never been this first of all i i love the country we live in in terms of what it's supposed to you know signify on paper what it's supposed to right there's a lot of bruises there's a lot of ugly things about America. I'm not going to shy away from that. I've never been, though, a America kind of guy. Like, mm-hmm. I don't rock American flags. You're I don't, sitting there in a Canada t-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> I don't I don't rock, you know, America things on the 4th of July. I just, I'm not that patriotic. Um, and I've always sort of felt the same about Rhode Island. I, I liked it living here because I've been living here my whole life. But it's more of, you know, I've just been here. Right. So you didn't like, know anything else. Yeah. I'm just, this yeah. is it. Then when you deep dive into it and you research it, you're just like, oh, this place is fucking great. Yeah. And if I was someone that didn't live here, that was researching the things that we did and put it on that, I'd say, I want to go here. Yeah. We had you a know? couple listeners, especially a lot of your uh, friends from your previous podcast from who live Canada. in Canada. Yeah. They were like, well, I have my Rhode Island bucket list. Thanks. Yes. That was easy. Yes. <laughs> yes. I I am the most proud of that episode. I think that's the most fun. I think that's the funniest episode we've done. I think it is one of the best back and forths. And I can just imagine people listening to the stores we talk about, to the places we talk about that have never stepped foot or even heard a Rhode Island and they're just thinking what the, what the fuck, fuck are these yeah. people talking and you know about? what that turned into a really fun conversation on one of our zoom date nights with the babes mm. we talked oh, yeah. about yeah, like because they're from the complete opposite coast they're from California mm. and so we were talking about sp- things that are specific to Rhode Island or the east coast and uh some of the specific words that we use that and we ended up I think like quizzing them yeah like do you know what a a grinder. Like a grinder is. Or like, and it was hilarious to hear their responses. And they had a few. A, a carriage or a shopping carriage. cart. Yeah. yeah. Um, and stop and shop. They didn't know what that was. Oh, they love like, stop and shop. Stop and shop. Yeah. <laughs> like, what does that mean? <laughs> um, and they had a few to throw back at us, like yeah. West Coast lingo that we didn't weren't super familiar with. But I think a lot of it we, we like we had heard, even though we don't yeah, use it. Yeah. A lot of the stuff that's so specific to New England and Rhode Island, they were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, when I found out they lived on a boat, I said, oh, you guys can just sail on over it because we're the ocean state. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> fuck, you can't just sail your boat well, through the country. Well, they can't. They just have to go <laughs> yeah, have to all go the way around. <laughs> so I'm saying, oh, there's, there's no, like, cut through. Yeah, it's going to take, well, they got to cut through somewhere in, like, Central America, yeah, <laughs> Mexico yeah. area. <laughs> But I digress. I, I love the Rhode Island episode. That's by far my favorite episode we we did. Um, the 90s is really good, too, um, in my opinion. I don't like to brag about things, but I that 90s episode brought me back. And again, mm-hmm. it, it was it was a it's right now. It's a it's a conflict of what I feel to be one of the hidden gems of the fucking world being Rhode Island and growing up in possibly the best decade ever. Yeah. Like having that be my coming of age and reliving all the things that we used to, not even all of them, just like the major. It was hard beats. to pick. Yeah. Yeah. But you you think 90s. That's my favorite for a lot, for the nostalgia and for the fact that I proved you wrong. <laughs> I don't think so. But I do, I, look, if, 
if you grew up in the 90s and you know you're you're new to the show kick back dig through the archives download the one where we talk about the 90s or if you've never heard of Rhode Island before and you think we mean Long Island we don't um <laughs> Just check out the Rhode Island episode. I promise you won't be disappointed. Those, And it, again, surprised me none that it's 90s versus Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I, I think I'm with you. I don't want to pick which one's going to win. Um, I have my suspicions, but I think it's going to be difficult for people to vote on that. Yeah, Because those two just fucking ran right through the polls. Oh, yeah. They they won in all their mass matchups very easily, and that speaks to the strength of those episodes and why we like them. Mm-hmm. And if we like them so much, then people that have listened to that that definitely resonated with people. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think in podcasting, and again, we'll get to this next week. But when it comes to podcasting, it's not just the topic you're talking about; it's the delivery. Mm-hmm. And I think even though pandemic is when we you know, theoretically or topically hit our, you know, groove. Well, I think it's just where we broadened our horizons yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But with these two episodes, I think that's, this is peak while she's napping, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. It's good stuff. <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll have that poll up later today. So we'll be up by the time you listen. Yeah. So mm-hmm. head on over to Instagram, go to Instagram.com slash while she's napping or at while she's napping. I, sometimes people like to do Instagram on the desktop, I guess. Sure. I do it sometimes. <laughs> um, but if you're on the app at while she's napping, participate in the polls. Let us know what you think. 90s versus Rhode Island. Um, I guess it's me versus you right now. I guess so. And that means yeah. you're going to win. <laughs> And just I mean, I default. already won on the Britney Spears Limp Bizkit yeah, thing. So. Default, whatever. Yeah, whatever. I don't think you did. Mm-hmm. Um, next week, we're going to continue our sort of sporadic So You Wanna series. So we have So You Wanna Have a Kid, So You Wanna Get Married. Now we're going to do So You Wanna Start a Podcast. And even though we covered our podcasting and what it has meant to us with this show in obviously long form, long form we're going to get into the intricacies of what, you know, if you're if you're interested in starting a podcast, what you should do, um, helpful uh, resources you can utilize, where to host it, how to do it. I think uh, you know a lot. The amount of times I see, I've seen on Reddit on r slash podcasting. I want to start a podcast, but don't know where to begin. I think an episode on that is sort of meta. And yeah. people will appreciate that. Sure. So that's what we're going to do. But that's going to do it for this episode. Again, happy one year anniversary, birthday, whatever, to while she's <laughs> napping. We really appreciate that participation. We really appreciate you guys listening all the way through. Um, if you hopped on midway or whatever, we still thank you very much. This has been overwhelming for us, and we really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, listening to my wife and I banter while our child sleeps. Um, that being said, please subscribe to us on whatever your favorite podcatcher is, or if you're listening to us on YouTube, subscribe to us there. Leave us five stars, a like, share, let your friends know about while she's napping. We appreciate it. And if you want to participate in the polls or shoot us a message or whatever you can. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash while she's napping on Instagram at while she's napping on Twitter at she's napping pod, or you can email us at while she's napping at gmail.com. Hit us up. And uh, until next week, thanks. Peace. Bye.